Hi, my name is Terry Lee, and today we're going to make this little Alice in Wonderland folio. Now, this uh, paper that I'm using is called uh, Grunge Alice, and it's by uh, Janie B. Journals. You can get it on Etsy, and there'll be a link below the video. Um, just click on the uh, More link underneath the name of the video, and that will expand out um, a whole text file of all kinds of information links to where I get my equipment and things like that. Okay, so let's take a look at the folio. Um, you're going to open it like this and there's going to be another picture. This is just a background paper and then I fussy cut. Yes, yes I did. All these little keys and everything out and uh, put them on, inked them up and then put them on the page and then you open it like this and I printed out these two little pockets um, quite a bit smaller in the tickets um, than they were normally um, would have printed out if I hadn't manipulated the pictures. If you want to learn how I do that in Publisher, Microsoft Publisher, um, then there's another video that I um, show you a, a computer tutorial on how to do that. This page right here is a background with a hidden pocket and I'm going to put a bigger tag in here but um, I didn't, um, I forgot to make this one bigger in the program. But you do open it and there's writing space inside. And then you open this side. There's a side pocket. Whoops. And there's three cards. And um, I like that one of the uh, white rabbit. And then you flip it over and they are printed on the back side. You could still probably write on there if you had a black pen. Oh, and I wanted to show you this. I um, took a tag and put it on this pocket which is actually the flap of the envelope that we're not going to seal all the way across otherwise we won't have a pocket um, and uh, to make it a little more decorative okay and then when you put these back in you have to kind of be careful or they'll catch the fold there's a way to do it see I'm having a problem already and I'm only 30 seconds in. Okay, there we go. And then this is a notebook. You can take this out and here's a great big tag. See this size is probably the size I should put over here. Anyway, I um, this is just a page printed out on the front and the back with two of the different background pages and um, I fussy cut this Alice out and put it on the front and I put in these are would normally be uh, stamps that you would cut out separate but I just left them in a long strip and put it on the back and I actually think I'm going to put something on the inside here and something on the inside here now these papers are just typing paper and I cut them to size oh we're also going to make this notebook a little bigger in the tutorial than it is mm, because it kind of slides up and down a little bit and I, I, I think I would like it a little bit bigger probably a quarter of an inch. Um, anyway, this is just typing paper and I make my own um, homemade um, combination alcohol ink acrylic um, metallic gold paint um, and I spray it with this. Even if I hold it up to the camera you're probably not going to be able to tell that it's gold and it has a um, little um, sheen of the metallic on it. It's really cool when you see it in person. So you put this back on. Now this is such a small little notebook that I just went ahead and stapled it from the outside and I'll show you how to do that even though this page is wider than the stapler is going to reach. You're going to need, um, oh let's go over the list of things you're going to need. So believe it or not we're going to make this whole thing out of two envelopes. Let me close that up like that. You're going to need two white envelopes. These are size A9. A is an apple. 9. Um, and they're just large gift cards um, for gift card size envelopes. And um, then you're also going to need a junk journal kit. Um, now, here's what I did is I separated mine out. Um, this is going to be the notebook cover, so I printed this front and back with the background picture. 
and uh, the cover would actually go this way. I'm going to trim that little bit of white off. I don't know why it printed out that way. Um, and then these are some background pictures. Uh, this is for the inside in here behind the notebook. You can see it goes all the way across. And then um, this one I'm going to, this one and this one or this one or this one, I'm going to use for the inside here and then um, the inside uh, here for the pocket. Okay, and so those are the background. So you're going to need three of these uh, with the pictures on them because we're going to cut them in half. You won't use all of them, but you will definitely need three if you're going to mix and match the pictures. You're going to need um, a couple that you're going to want to fussy cut out of. You're going to want uh, one that you select that's your favorite, the cut in half. This image is going to be the cover. This is going to be the back. And then we've got the background pages and the notebook cover. And then we have the, um, this time I'm going to go with seven pages of notebook paper. So that's what you need for that. You're going to need also your basic crafting items. You're going to need scissors, pencil, glue, those kind of things. Now, in addition to that, you're going to need some black acrylic paint. Now, this is just craft paint from Apple Barrel, and I got this great big thing for like $6 for 16 ounces. You're also going to need some ink to ink around these pictures. Now, I forgot to do it on this, and if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, once we make this black, from the white envelope. If you start out with black envelopes, then you won't have to do that step, um, except um, in the middle here, you'll have to do it. So you might as well just do the white and paint around the edges in the black. But uh, if you want to ink the edges of the pictures, which I think I'm going to do this time, then you need to have the ink ready. Okay. And um, you're going to need the uh, dye or the spray to spray the paper. Now to find out how to uh, make the gold spray and to also get this printed out without the scribble, printed out copy of the tutorial step by step, all you need to do is go to the Facebook group, uh, uh, Sweet Pea Papers, it's uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash sweet pea papers and it's all one word and you if you uh, join the group uh, it's a private group but if you join the group then you will get this bonus plus a bonus video on how I make the um, ink okay so you're going to want to make sure to check that out now the steps we're going to use to make the folio let me get this stuff out of the way are fairly simple you're going to take the two envelopes and you're going to cut some off the top and the bottom because you see this narrows down and so you want to keep it kind of centered. You don't want to have all of it cut off on here and um, none on the other. Um, mainly to make it easier when you make your flap. Now on my flap I squared off the piece of paper anyway and made the, the pocket square but you can do whatever you want. If you like that little bit of taper on each side, then I would say go for it. Totally up to you. But we need these to be eight inches high and they are currently almost nine inches high. They're eight and three quarters. So we're gonna wanna cut an eighth of an inch off each end and that will give us a quarter that should give us an eighth anyway. So we're going to make this eight and an eighth. Okay, and then we're going to cut this off. It's a little tough. You want to be firm. See, and I didn't get it all the way through. Uh, that tiny little bit. And then on this side, I'm going to turn it around. On this side, we're going to put it on eight. And you see, I did cut it a little crooked. But I'm going to square mine off 
my flap so it's not going to really matter the main thing is that we want it to be eight inches high plus this allows us to open up the envelope because we're cutting some off of each end okay so this one I guess uh, I must have got scooched over to eight and a quarter by accident because an eight and an eight is going to be a quarter so I'm not sure why that's showing they must be bigger so let's go eight and a quarter oh yeah I said they were eight and three quarters so we're gonna go eight and a quarter this will give us closer And then we're going to flip it around and we're going to put it at 8. It's going to end up the same way. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, see I should have made sure on this one that I had cut all the way through before I whipped it off the, off the cutter. It's that extra little bit. When you open it up here you'll see. We're going to remove this little, so you'll see this little extra thick made it four pages thick and that was why it was so hard to cut. Um, you're going to take these little pieces off, make sure to get the paper off. You're going to have a little bit of a glue residue, but that's okay. Just be careful to not cut or pull off the end of your envelope. That one wasn't very cooperative. Yes, I'm throwing each one of these away. I'm kind of nutty that way. Yeah, see that one came right off. Oh, because the short side didn't have the glue anymore. So I'm going to open this one and take the paper off. I started watching, um, uh, oh, what's it called? Okay, never mind. Anyway, I was binge watching it yesterday evening. My hours are kind of backwards. It's about 4.30 in the morning right now, and I actually got up at 11 o'clock last night, and, um, Oh, horror, American Horror Story, I think it's called. Um, you can get it on Amazon now, all the way up through Season 8. Anyway, um, so now we've got 8-inch tall envelopes. And when you open them up, we're going to glue them over. But we're going to have the glue on one end and the glue on... So you're going to lay them facing the same way. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to label one A and the other one B. Okay. Now, you're going to want to measure to, um, they're going to measure out, I'm sorry, when you measure it with the flap open. It's going to be 23 if you lay them next to each other. Actually, it's going to be close to 24. So there's 12. Another 12 plus the width of the tape. So to make it 23 and 3 quarters, we're just going to overlap the tape, or the tape, the glue and then that's how much overlap we're going to have. Alright, so then just fold this back, put the glue, we're going to use actual glue on top of this, we're not just going to go by the sticky. We're going to try not to set our pencil down in the way. We're going to glue this. Now it's going to kind of make the glues to start get sticky because this glue is liquid. So if you're like me, I kind of scrape I don't know if you can hear it, scrape the um, glue bottle and so there's not as much coming out as it sounds like. And of course I bumped the paper. 
So you're just going to want to be careful and overlap and then make sure they're straight. Looks like that one's a little crooked. So it's still only 8 inches high, so it's going to cover. Now kind of double check. Make sure you're at 23 and 3 quarters. So we're at 12. And yeah, close to 23 and 3 quarters. Okay. If you want to, you can mark envelope A where you're going to overlap, and then that way when you slide B up, you know what line to go for. That's totally up to you. All right. Now, we're going to make some gussets so that we have sort of a book um, binding. Uh, what do you call it? Anyway. I'm just going to stand up. This stool and I are fighting. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Okay, we're going to turn it the right way. Now, I guess you could have done this before we glued them together. It's up to you. Now, you're not going to be able to see this on camera because with these white envelopes, it's uh, really hard to see. But I'm going to line the crease where the envelope originally folded with one of these grooves making sure it's straight and I'm just doing it this way because it's easier than putting this all the way over in the corner for me anyway so you line that up line it up straight kind of hard with these brighter lights I have an extra light on for when I film and then you're going to crease it or recrease it on the original line to make a better folding thing. You're going to go over one, two, okay. I'm going to do that. Now then you're going to come over here and right in here where the original fold was on the envelope, I mean the flap fold. I'm sorry, where the flap would have folded. You see here the flap is overlapped, so you're going to go to this fold right here. And you're going to do the same thing, only when you make your um, crease for your gusset, um, let's line this up, you're going to go to the left of the original crease. So on this one you go to the right, this one you're going to go to the left reinforce or re-accent the original and then go over one, two and make a new one. Right? So this is going to help you with your booklet. It's going to give you enough of a fold so that when you um, go ahead and use your bone folder and make a nice sharp crease. You might have heard it called burnishing before. our original fold. Here's our gusset fold. Spine. A book spine. That's the word I was trying to think of. If you kind of pinch it, you kind of pinch it. I'm hoping my head isn't under the camera. It's kind of, it would be kind of difficult for me to do that the way I have my webcam set up. I have it hooked up to my computer. I'm not, I don't have an iPhone or an iPad, so a webcam. A webcam is much cheaper. <laughs> okay, now envelope B, this flap right here is going to be our pocket, but we're not going to glue it yet. We're going to do our papers first. Um, so now we're going to make the um, there's going to be a little gap so that our fold here will A, it'll be reinforced, plus it'll give us a little bit of give for when we fold it up over the um, over the notebook right in here. Okay, it'll give us a little bit more 
this corner won't be so sharp all right so we're going to get our paper trimmer out again we're going to knock over the glue that we forgot to put the lid on even with my reading glasses i don't see so well close up all right i think i'll take a drink of coffee real quick Good coffee, a little bit hot. <laughs> so I'm going to line this up. Once again, a little bit difficult under these lights. Then I'm just going to whack the end off. Take this end and turn it around, lay it down. Take this and turn it around and lay it down. Now, what I'm going to use, and I forgot to mention that you're going to need this is I use medical cloth, medical tape. You can use Tyvek. Tyvek here in the U.S. is not cheap, and um, it's kind of it's difficult to find it uh, to get it in a roll. You could buy a Tyvek suit and cut it up. Um, you can buy Tyvek envelopes and cut them up. Um, you can order it in sheets like typing paper, which is what I've done. But just for this little folio, I'm not gonna you know, spend that money to, to cut two pieces of it because um, it's not really necessary. It doesn't have to be that strong. I'm going to save the Tyvek for reinforcing um, uh, actual uh, book covers. So anyway, you're going to take this and you're going to line it back up just like it was, only this time you're going to leave a little bit of a gap so that there's a little bit more hinge action going on. Now you're going to take your tape, and this is wide, so you're only going to need one half width, okay? You're going to roll it out so that you've got a piece that's this length. You can make it just a smidge longer if you want. I've already gone ahead and cut the piece, yay! And that wide of a piece, you're going to cut it in half. And the easiest way to do this, you want to make sure they're straight. And the easiest way to do this without bumping the paper is to hold it like this and then just smunk it down, smunch it down fast. This almost looks like it's a little wider at the bottom. No, I think it's an optical illusion. Then we're going to, that's why you want to make it really close to the length. We stuck it to the table. Now when you put on this side, it's much easier because it's already stuck together. So you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to lay it down right over the top. And then we're going to trim it off. Usually I don't make it to where it sticks over, it sticks over that far. I'm going to trim it off so it's even. with the paper. Okay, now we're going to number our sections for when we cut our paper. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see, but this is envelope A, this is envelope B. So we're going to start with this first panel. We're going to call it number one, then between the gusset and the tape. We're going to number that two. Then this whole section from the, this gusset all the way over to where it's going to be under the um, the flap for the pocket. We're going to number that section three because remember that's going to be one whole sheet with the gusset in it. And then we're going to flip it over. Let me see. Let's make sure. Yeah, this is going to this is going to be the cover. I always write cover and back instead of making numbers for those. That's totally up to you. So then when we open this up, this is going to be the pocket. And then this is going to be number four. And this is going to be number five. Alright, so you've got them numbered. And now, 
you want to measure for the papers. I actually have this written down backwards. Um, I have to uh, paint them first but then you, with black and then you won't be able to see. I'll have to uh, fix that in the paper. Um, oops, that's why we labeled them A and B. So now you're going to measure each one individual because they're going to be different sizes. They're not going to all be like 8 by 5 or whatever. They're going to be close but um, you're going to want to measure and then, um, oops, I put it on the wrong side. I try to put everything back in the same spot. So you're going to, you know you're, that you're at 8 inches high, okay? So all you have to do is measure the width. So now this one, um, you measure from the end of the paper to about an eighth of an inch inside our gap, all right? So that's going to be on this, it's going to be 10 and a quarter, let's do it down here, I'm sorry, that's centimeters. This is going to be four, let's call it four and a half, four and one half by eight. Write it in the center, okay, and then this one we're going to go from the inside here about an eighth of an inch in and then we're going to go to the inside the closest side of the gusset okay so we're going to measure that and that's going to be five and five eighths by eight Actually, these are eight, and I wanted to leave a little bit of a border on the top and the bottom. You see on this one, the uh, paper goes all the way to the top and the bottom. And I think I want to be able to see the black around the edges on the inside. So I'm going to leave a quarter of an inch, um, which is going to be an eighth of an inch at the top and the bottom. So I'm going to make this seven and three quarters. I almost forgot I was going to do that. Seven and three quarters. Right now we're going to measure, remember this is a fold, this is the gusset. We're going to paint it but we don't need paper on it so we're going to go from this side of it and we're going to go all the way to where the paper ends covered by the pocket. I have my 14 year old boy voice today. Okay, and really when you trim your paper um, it's going to be eight and an eighth by ten and five eighths so just measure ten and five eighths yeah ten and five eighths it's going to be there so we're this one's going to be ten and five eighths remember we're going to this is a long way paper we're turning it sideways by seven and three quarters and you don't have to write anything over here because that's that whole page will put a gusset in the paper so that uh, the fold won't make everything all wrinkly. Then we're going to measure the pocket which is two and a half or two and a quarter so that's going to be two and a quarter by seven and three quarters then from the edge here to the inside gusset here. So that's going to be five and I'm going to leave that little eighth of an inch. So that's going to be five and three eighths. Five, whoops, five and three eighths by seven and three quarters. I told you these were all going to be different. Then you're going to, this is the back cover. So a little bit of glue there. Um, and so you're going to go from the inside of the gusset or the right side of the gusset to the inside, which is the left side of the gusset. So we're going to measure that. And that's going to be, remember you're going to leave a little bit of a gap here and a little bit of a gap here for the fold. So I better measure it that way. So that's without the little gap is going to be five and three quarters. So let's go back an eighth. So let's call that five 
and 5 eighths, 8 by 7 and 3 quarters. The cover, remember, is going to be closed and the gusset is going to be here and we want a little bit of a gap. So we're going to go in a little bit. We're going to leave a little bit like an eighth. Then over here we need to leave an eighth because of our seam, our, our fold that we cut open with the tape. So I need to get a, bit, a different ruler because this metal ruler under the lights, I'm having to tip my head sideways to see. So this is five and five eighths, so let's call it five and a half by seven and three quarters. Then this last little piece, or this last piece, we're going to give it a, about an eighth. And we're going to go, now this one will actually be the same size as the one on the other side. So that's four and a half by seven and three quarters. Four and a half by seven and three quarters. Well, I guess this should actually be the same on the front and the back. You just want to make sure you've got it. Um, oh, except on the 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 out this other side, not the side we've marked A and B, but the other side, we're not going to do one big piece because that would be across the back and across this plus the gusset and and um, I. The back is going to be a different picture than number four, so that's why we measured the two smaller pieces. So that's why the measurements are different. Okay, so now that we know what the measurements are and we've written them down, what we're going to do next is we are going to paint the envelope edges, and I'm going to show you. Um, I know that watching somebody paint and watching paint dry is probably about one of the most boring things other than watching people um, cut paper. But I wanted to show you this um, because of the tape and because of the gussets. So now this paint is not super thick so I just kind of shake it up and then I open this and then look there's some on the lid and I use the lid like a little palette. And now on this tape it's gonna, it's paper, so it's gonna, or cloth, so it's gonna soak up your paint. And you wanna go past, make sure the seam, you wanna go past it enough to cover when you put your papers on. Alright, so you're gonna wanna paint that, and you're gonna wanna go all the way to the edge. And then you're also going to wanna make sure that you get the edge and this end. You know, you don't want to have the white showing across the edge, just like when you ink. Now, if you're going to ink this, then you already know how to do it, I'm sure. Okay, now when you get here, you're going to want to paint the gusset area in the middle because that's going to show. I know that's going to be a pain in the butt when you're lining up your papers, but there's no real other way to do it. And you're going to do a cross, so you're going to make a box around all the sections. Alright, so you're going to paint this gusset all the way down. You're going to paint this gusset all the way down. Alright, so you want to paint that one. Don't worry about this. You are going to fold around here. Make sure you get the edge on this side and the edge on the inside. Make sure you get this edge because it's going to show. Now when you flip it over, you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to make sure that you paint the middle of the gussets, the two gussets, okay? You're going to also want to make sure that you paint the tape. Don't worry, um, it looks a little wrinkly here, but when it dries it flattens right out. I don't know what material, what kind of paper these envelopes are made out of. Um, and you might have to do two coats or kind of a little bit extra. I would do two thin coats um, to keep it the chance of it wrinkling up or, or waving up to a minimum. And then you're going to want to do, of course, all the way around the top, all the way around all four sides. 
you're going to want to do both ends. This side doesn't have a flap, so you're going to make sure to go all the way to the end. All right, so those are the main things I wanted to show you about painting. And um, so I'm going to end this one here, and your homework is going to be to cut out your papers and to paint all your edges, and then we will uh, put the papers on and make the pocket and make the notebook uh, in the second half. Okay, so this is the end of this video and um, I'll see you in the next video and then that's going to be uh, about a minute for you or a second for you and a day for me. Thank goodness. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.